We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Among the oldest questions of humans are who are we? What are we doing here? Where did we come from? How did we get here? And where are we going? As you know, two of these questions are tract tractable to scientific inquiry. And this is the question of anthropogeny explaining the origin of humans. Where did we come from and how did we get here? And so pursuing this discipline involves most academic disciplines. So we incorporate people from many backgrounds. And the symposium, of course, is sp sponsored by CARTA, the Center for Academic Research and Training in Anthropogeny. And this is a transdisciplinary collaboration between faculty at UC San Diego, Salk Institute, along with interested scientists at other institutions. And our mission is to explore and explain the origins of the human phenomenon. Our co-directors are myself, Rusty Gage, Margaret Schoeninger, and our associate directors, Pascal Gagneau. With special thanks to our major sponsor, the Mathers Charitable Foundation in New York, Howard Chester, the executive, co -director, executive director. And also a special thank you to Annette Moe Smith for support of our graduate specialization in anthropogeny at UC San Diego. Thank you to the sponsors of the symposium closed captioning on YouTube, Elizabeth Lancaster and Eli Schefter. And we're particularly grateful to our many individual supporters who are just listed here, uh, but also at the website. Uh, and they are part of the rotating slides that you see also. We like to honor them. And you can become a Carter supporter today. And special thanks, of course, to the Carter staff, uh, Ingrid, Jackie, Kate, Linda, and Jesse, and UCSD TV, Rich Vargo, Matt, Stephen, Marcy, and Jacob. And of course, the Sock Media Services, Kent and Mike. And last but not least, our guitarist, George Svoboda. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Rusty Gage. I'm the, uh, as uh, she said, I'm one of the co-directors with Margaret and Ajit and Pascal, and uh, one of the co-sponsors of today's uh, presentation to you all. I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation for why we're having this meeting today, how we came about doing this uh, meeting, and uh, I'm also going to give you the first of our presentations today on, on my approach and take to this. So. Some of you are uh, longtime per participants in these symposia and will be somewhat intimidated probably by the title of this current presentation, Cellular Molecular Mechanisms that are underlying or the evolving the differences between humans and non-human primates. So, so probing the molecular, molecular cellular differences, so Remember what uh, she told us. He said that uh, our goal is to really understand uh, where we came from. How did we get here? 
and what is the mechanism or what is the way in which this happened. And in, in truth, most of what we've uh, been talking about for many years is uh, the ways in which we actually examine this is by looking at DNA from uh, post-mortem tissue from our closest relatives, uh, even Neanderthals now, and sequencing that DNA and comparing it with humans and looking for the difference that exists. Uh, we have post-mortem tissue itself where we can look at brain structures and see how they may have changed uh, with evolution, anatomical kinds of information. And of course, at the core of it, we have uh, archaeological evidence for bones where we can get brain casts and look at how the brain size has changed. And even if you get a good cast, you can see how certain areas of the brain have grown more in different species or different uh, evolving creatures over time, these uh, endocasts. And finally, uh, we have archaeological evidence that gives insights into uh, perhaps even the thought processes that were going on while our species were evolving. So uh, in the case of DNA, we, 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 ha we have genes. In the case of the postmortem tissue, we, we have tissues and, and, and uh, slices and histo histological evidence. Uh, with bones, we have inferences about size and structure. And of course, archaeological evidence, we have um, cultural implications. And so a missing piece for this, for a lot of us, has been really what we consider to be mechanisms at the level of uh, cellular and molecular events. And uh, there's a growing interest in this piece here. And uh, we call it the missing link. It's a joke. Just to get the, um, uh, missing link in the sequence of events. And uh, there are some recent uh, technologies that have been developed that have allowed us to get insights into tissues. Uh, one is using what you'll hear a bit about, which is called induced pluripotent cells. This is the ability to take somatic cells from any species and convert them into a embryonic cell that can be differentiated into all cells of the body, including neurons. So for living organisms that we normally can't penetrate and see how their brain functions, we can now look at behavioral function, look at the genes while they're active, while they're alive. In addition, uh, you'll hear a lot about uh, model organisms where once genes have been identified that might have implications for certain growth patterns that are unique to humans, they can be tested experimentally in living animals, different species, that uh, reveal to us how that unique change in the gene may have fostered a meaningful change that is relevant to how it is that we became who we are. So that is the, that's the motivation. And, and uh, you know, on a personal note, I would say that my, my hope is, my uh, you know, hopes are always mixed with worries. Uh, is, the worry is not that we develop a whole new area of research that just looks in towards ourselves uh, explaining more and more about the cellular molecular mechanisms, but rather that these new tools become vehicles for expanding outward into the other panoply of ways in which we can, we can study uh, evolution. There's a, an emerging idea now, sort of a reemergence of a concept in, uh, in science uh, called convergent science. It was a term that uh, was modified uh, from the concept of consilience, but it is the idea that um, different levels of science that normally talk specifically to themselves begin to understand how they can transmit information from one level to the next. And that's how we believe or hope that new concepts and, and deeper thoughts will emerge. So our challenge, as most of us as cellular and molecular biologists that are speakers in this symposium, is to, to think about how we can use this information to stretch this and expand to these other areas that are so important for understanding uh, the underlying principles.